Floor Models Daily Vlog. Here we are on Wednesday the 13th of January 2016. And as you can see, been pushing on nicely with the actual uh, Terminator. We've got the front end on. We're basically ready for the whole bits to go together and all the rest of it. Turning into a cracking kit. Generally, the fit and everything else like that is absolutely fantastic. The actual working suspension is working, which is very nice touch. We're a little bit worried about the, there's like a wheel section that goes in, which makes the activators work. Um, and I was a bit concerned that they were going to freeze up on me, but so far, so good. No problems with it at all. So it's really pushing on. So part one of that is up on the site. It's only a 24 minute part because the next part of it is quite a long one. So it balances itself out. So you can go ahead and watch that one. And that one basically gets you to this stage, okay? And then obviously we're gonna be working on the next part of the turret and all the bits and pieces. So that next part will be up next Wednesday for part two. And then hopefully part one of the uh, MiG-21 will be up with you on Monday. Uh, apologies for the vlog being late, extremely late. That wasn't me. Uh, I recorded it, usual time. Today we're a little bit later. It's coming up for 10 past five now. But normally I record them around about half past four. Uh, and then obviously uh, we edit it and it up and normally it's up by sort of you know finished editing and uploaded onto YouTube by sort of five o'clock ish half past five ish uh, and then obviously it gets processed by YouTube and you're completely at their mercy and I don't know what was going on but instead of it taking 10 to 15 minutes to do it actually took some like four hours and it didn't go live until 10 o'clock uh, last night but it wasn't me uh, I know I had loads of PMs and messages saying no vlog and all the rest of it no uh, it's a little bit put behind purely because of uh, YouTube dragging its heels uh, I do have to say a fantastic job in the forum guys I know I said I would start these little mini debates and questions and we were talking about obviously Bandai kits and do they have a place in the hobby technically um, some of you are calling them snap fit kits. I don't think that's necessarily fair. Um, I, yeah, I can see the generation because technically you don't need glue, so that makes them sort of a snap fit kit, but they're a bit more detailed than your traditional kids level one snap type things. Like, hold on, I just grab it. Like we were talking about, um, you know, these are what I would call your snap type ones. Don't get me wrong, I still think they're quite good uh, and good value for the money for toys, I would say, more than anything else. I think these are a great thing for the kids, this is the Rebel X Wing, that, you know, you could actually sit down with the kids, um, build it with them, and then they can fly it around the actual house uh, for the afternoon and all the rest of it. I think these are more your sort of snap fit kits, i.e. the kids just put them together, they take half an hour, and then you go and play with them for the rest of the life, and that is about it, okay? So I think they're more sort of plate things than these guys. Um, these ones, I think, you know, although they don't need glue, you could always glue them and everything else. But generally, the comments we've had and the feedback and everything else like that, I thought was absolutely great. Um, I think, yes, they definitely have their point in the hobby. And a lot of you have said, if you lose your mojo, that's basic. We always get stuck with a dog of a kit that just drags you down. You could do a Bandai kit for a day, finish it and weather it and get the old mojo back. I think that's a really good analogy for them. Um, but I definitely think they have their place in the hobby. I think if you're a, a modeler and you're getting into it, you're more into the painting and weathering and everything else like that, then by all means, I think these are absolutely fantastic for you. If you're a modeler and perhaps you like to detail things, um, and like has been mentioned by quite a few of you in the forum about, it'd be interesting to know how you could open one up, okay? This is the thing, the plastic by its nature, I think is heavy gauge than you will find in your more traditional kits. And I think that's the difference because this tends to be very large, chunky locating devices and everything else, which hold it all together, let's face it, that uh, trying to get in there and open one up. So say you was to be thinking, okay, let's open up a panel on the X-Wing. That's gonna be really thick plastic to be able to do that. And it's not gonna be as straightforward as it would be perhaps on one of the you know the other kits um, uh, and things like that so definitely from that point of view i think that is where the problem would be if you wanted to open one up i don't think it's impossible but by its nature they are very bricky uh, and all the rest of it so i think that's going to be its only shortfall but generally i think is it a kit or is it sort of an easy kit? I think it's more of a kit. I would see these as a kit more than a, a straightforward snap fit thing because you could do more to it if you wanted to. Um, some of you mentioned about the detail and all the rest of it, the wide wing, which to be honest over in the cabinet behind me, um, the detail on that, you couldn't add any more. Um, because it's all there. And that's the level of engineering in that kit is absolutely amazing. I think the Y-Wing is the, the pinnacle kit of theirs at the moment, purely because you're out of detail into it. The, uh, you know, the actual, the main body and the, the, the engines and all the rest of it, the detail that is in there, 
I, I'm amazed it's that detailed. You know, you would traditionally thinking resin aftermarket and all the rest of it, but just, a, you know, let's face it, injection mold it into parts that click in and do it. What I do think is very, very clever with the kits though, is the way that they hide their seams. Um, and I know we were talking about obviously in the forum, that technically you know seam filling is part of modeling that's what modeling is all about that you're actually going to go through uh, and you're going to have to tackle things like making a good seam okay so that could involve dry fitting and making sure it fits properly uh, and finding out reasons why it doesn't because we all have trouble mainly with aircraft halves going together and there's a fault okay with armor it's a little bit easier to deal with it because you've got bigger tolerances and things like that but on aircraft if you've got center seam of an airliner which we'll be you know tackling in a few weeks time that needs to be perfect because it's completely on show okay so obviously you wouldn't need that problem with bandai kits because very cleverly they hide the seam lines by lowering and hiring height differences and making sure that when things go together there is no seam line and but the way they do that is with huge locating devices which really pull it tight is that something where you know technically if you had an airliner with better locating devices and pins and things like that that pulled it in you wouldn't have that trouble but again is that taking something away from the hobby don't know but anyway great feedback i've sat and spent the afternoon reading them all and all the rest of it and absolutely loved it and i think it's a really good thing very mature of everybody as well because obviously i know you get the guys who hate this stuff and you get the guys who love it and even the guys who are not into it mentioned it as well and everything else so kudos to you all so this particular one for today is paint now why is it there's so many different manufacturers of paint and like lemmings we all go out and buy them for instance, Light Coast Grey, I've got probably four or five different manufacturers of it. But my original one, which let's face it, my original proper one, if you like, you're going through it, would be the um, Mr. Hobby colour one, uh, is a great colour. I think it's pretty spot on. I can't see a problem with it. I'm not worried about light greys because by the time I weather them, they will look different anyway. But why is it we're all like lemmings and we're like, Oh, like, you know, going through the list here, I've got Vallejo. So like Vallejo brought out one, right, I'll go and buy that. And then we go out and we buy somebody else's and somebody else's and somebody else's. And it's the same with something like uh, REF Greens, um, you know, things like that. You know, everybody makes them. Yet most of us, if you're like me, we've all got different colors of them by different manufacturers. Okay, so we've got like, you know, Ocean Grey with four or five manufacturers. Why is it we feel the need as modelers to rush out and buy a paint that, let's face it, is going to take a new learning curve to learn how to use it? Because, you know, as we know, spraying Vallejo Model Air is different from normal um, Vallejo model colour. Uh, and then obviously you've got MIG colours, you've got AK colours and everything else like that. And they've all got a slight little variant where you need to spray them a different way, use them a different way. But why do we go out and buy it? Why do we put ourselves into that? Because technically, the gun stuff I still maintain is probably the best one out there uh, to spray, to use, and the color, hardness, and all the rest of it. Um, then my next really nice choice for it would be probably go down Model Air route because their color is very nice with it. And then you've got everybody else's. But it's not so much for the guys who haven't got that color, so they've gone out and bought it. But if you're like me, and this is, you know, you know I buy all my own stuff. This isn't just that I'm given this stuff to go through. But like in here, for instance, I have, Let's have a look. What have we got? I've got various sets which I've gone out and bought and think, oh, I'll give them a whirl. So we've got down here the uh, World War II uh, Imperial Japanese Navy colours for aircraft. Yeah, I've got them all there. We've also got the, uh, this is uh, Vallejo's. Um, so this is all the um, RLM colours, again. I've got them all there times a few different manufacturers and uh, that's the other version of it as well that's the uh, pre-war up to 1941 version as well and i bought those well mid last year and i haven't touched them and they're in a drawer over here gathering dust uh, and all the rest of it but why is it we all rush out and buy and it's like oh look you know mig's brought out new color so let's go and buy it um you know when usually we get on well with a nice color and then these things tend to all your old colors sit and do nothing and gather dust and we all end up with paint racks like me with paints you never really use although i've got rid of a lot of the ones i don't use now normally down the other end you can't quite see because that was the end i didn't use because i can't reach it uh, but i've upgraded now and we've got more of the vallejo colors all down there that i do use and everything else so yeah that is today's questions about buying lots of different manufacturers same color of paint than what you've got in the first place why do we all do it so there we go that's today's question 
if you've got a question you'd like me to throw out to everyone so say you've got a question that you're thinking I'd like to know what everybody thinks. Use me as the, the, the old uh, soapbox to stand on. Shoot me either a PM through the forum or just put it into like this week underneath the Today page for this one. Say, Phil, ask them this and I will ask. Clean questions only, please. Uh, right, that is almost it for today. Apart from, um, I've been asked to do a studio tour by everyone it seems. I don't know why, it's like a New Year's thing. I don't know if everybody else is doing them on YouTube or something. Um, I have got lots of new things, including this turned up yesterday. Um, I don't know if you know what this is. This is a, a Prooxen. It's German, so you just know it's gonna be good. Um, but basically, it's a mini scroll saw, okay? And I know you can't quite see it, but I have it set up over there, and I've used it twice now. Uh, and one of them was for opening up a panel inside an aircraft, and you go around and do it. Boy, does that take out the stress of trying to get in there and drill and all the rest of it. Um, it's a little dinky thing. It's 126 quid, I think I paid for it. So it's not exactly cheap. But um, if you want to see a review on it, post up in the, the uh, forum and I'll let you know. Hello, Lola. Say hello to everybody. Yes. Right. <laughs> it must be near that time of day. The other thing I've got down here is a pillar drill as well. So if you want to see a review on that or if you know what a pillar drill is, but it's a little mini one. Um, so what I've done behind me is I've got uh, various tools. The only thing I need now is a sander thing and everything else like that. Somebody wants her dinner and I'm off to see Star Wars with my parents in a couple of hours as well. So if this isn't up early, you know why, it's because I have to do it after I've come back. So there we go, that's it for today. Catch you all tomorrow, happy modeling, take care. Come on, come on, Indians, come on.